So my friend Donovan had a tree removed in his yard and he sawed up some of the upper canopy into cans to make them easier to move. And I've had them sitting here in my trailer for a few months waiting for the mill to be done because I want to use these to do a little load testing on the mill. I can stack these things side by side and I can easily see how the mill will perform with a really wide cut without actually having to get a big log up there and um, having something potentially happen to that log if the cut doesn't go well. I'll leave a link to Diamond's channel down in the description if you want to see more about the cants and the rest of the tree that's still sitting there in his backyard. Well, that is frozen on there. There we go. So that one's almost 11 feet long. So if I can stagger these, that'd be the best. This is probably like 10 and a half. Yeah, it's 10 and a half. I think what I'll do is I'll grab these center two here, put them next to it, and then I have these smaller ones that I can put out on the outside for the absolute widest cut. <laughs> Definitely frozen. All right, it's moving now. So with this load test, I'm actually testing a few different things. Uh, the first and most obvious one would be the motor. Does it have enough power to actually pull that blade through a cut this wide? And also with that, does the transmission system have the ability to transfer that much power from the motor to the drive shaft? So in other words, will there be any kind of bell slippage or something like that? The second thing is the blade, and I think this is gonna be the thing that has the most issue, I think. Will the blade be able to cut straight across that width without deviating? So in other words, will the cuts end up nice and flat or will they end up wavy? And I guess also, can the blade even handle that much cut stress? Now lastly is the saw frame itself. Can the saw frame, the saw beam, and all the components in there handle the cut force as that blade is forced through that log or pushed through the log? Is it going to rack? Is it gonna be kind of distortion? So it'll also be interesting to see if the saw mill is actually structurally able to make that cut. All right, so this is set up right now. We got 53 inches wide. That's a lot. Um, if I can find something that's narrow, I can probably stick this little guy next to it. I'll throw this. crazy. <laughs> Probably should have put that one down first, but that's all right. Ah, I wonder if he'll cut this. <laughs> I have no idea. So I went ahead and I swapped out the blade I had on there. This blade is still fairly sharp. It still has a lot of life in it. Probably not as sharp as the brand new blade that I have on here right now. Yeah, it's pretty sharp. <laughs> um, that will still cut just fine on like probably 24 inches or I don't know, probably, probably cut that part just fine, but I wanted to have like a best case scenario for this test. This first cut is a bit of a cleanup pass. It gets me set on a lumber scale, so now the distance from the bed to the top of the log is evenly divisible into four quarter lumber. And we'll probably make a few four quarter passes, but it sounds like most of this lumber will be either eight quarter or nine quarter.
So that last cut was 12 and 12, 24 inches. Yep. So now we're going to be going to 36. Probably better. close to that. It's 41 minus these gaps. So it's 40, uh, 39 ish. 38, 39, well over three feet. <laughs> that should be very interesting. I hope this works. Well, actually, it's been cutting pretty well. Not bad. I tried, I didn't overload it at all. I was just feeding it as fast as it would just stay at the speed at. I don't know. I'm surprised it cut that fast. Besides these slabs being really heavy, I, I have no complaints. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty, uh, pretty good now about the rest of these cuts. Because I wasn't even, I mean, it was loading it, but it wasn't like straining at all. How's it look? It's straight? It's not wavy, is it? No, it doesn't seem like it is. It's hard to tell with the... No, you would see it like dip all over the place if it was. That's a consistent thickness. That tracked really straight. Nice. <laughs> wow. Cut. I honestly didn't think it would go that well. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you can feel it. I mean, you can kind of hear it like it's working, but it's not. I'm not about to stall it, the belts aren't slipping. Yep, you don't hear, yeah, you don't hear the squealing belts. Oh. <laughs> That's a wide cut. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of plank. <laughs> Alright, oh. It's straight though. Yeah, no, it looks... 53 inches. Fifty-three. That's ridiculous.
I can't believe it. I was thinking it'd be like, you feed a little bit, you let it speed back up again. So Diamond and I finished cleaning up those cants and he has a lot of lumber now. He took only one truckload home that day and uh, he's got a lot more to still come pick up. So overall I'm just absolutely thrilled and surprised that the saw cut that well uh, without any issues and as fast as it did. I was not expecting the cuts to go um, that fast. Three minutes to make a cut like that is just, uh, I don't know, from coming from a like chainsaw milling that's, that's nothing. Um, the rest of the saw performed really well. The, the frame didn't have any issues with um, moving around too much and I'm really surprised that the blade actually tracked perfectly straight across the entire cut without diving or raising at all. So it was just cutting phenomenally. So with that test out of the way, it really puts a lot of confidence in my mind to start cutting some of this bigger stuff that uh, is a little more valuable to me. Um, so the next, or I guess the first thing I'll be cutting by popular demand is this small, or one of my, one of my maple crotches. This is the smaller of the two maple crotches I have. It is um, five feet wide up here at the crotch, and I think it's like four feet down here or something like that. So it's pretty big, and uh, if, it, if the saw was able to cut that wide in um, uh, elm, it should have no problem cutting through this piece of silver maple. So. I'm looking forward to getting that done and that'll be the next sawmill video. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.